Hey everyone, it's Matt, and uh, today I thought I'd bring you a updated deck list for Menasaur slash the Stunticons. Now, my original video uh, did pretty well, and I figured I'd uh, talk about the changes I've made and also how the deck is done at local events. So, first of all, Menasaur is a combiner which very much relies on you getting into combined form as soon as you can. So let's go over his abilities. If you watched my original video, we kind of talked about the fact that Minasaur has a unique ability to play two cards that are action cards per turn. And you're going to want to be making sure that you always have the action cards in hand that will benefit you the most. So you can go ahead and uh, address this and also play against your opponent's weaknesses. Now, he has decent attack, which is at 6. His health is at 35. He's got a defensive 2, and he has bold 1, tough 1, and pierce 1, which will all take into effect once we uh, continue talking about the changes that we've made to this deck list. Now, the first change that we made is that we cut a bit of the upgrades down and put some more actions in. And the characters themselves, we're going to be going over the strategy and how you're going to be playing them. So, if we take a look at the characters here, we have Dead End, De Decepticon, Drag Strip, Breakdown, Motormaster, and Off-Road. You don't see any Wild Ride here because apparently he's not part of them anymore. But uh, as you look at these characters here, you're going to want to make sure that depending on which person you're playing against or what deck you're playing against, you're always going to want to swing with Off-Road first. The main reason why you're going to be want to be doing that is because off-road's ability is that he has he has three defense, and most times if you're playing a deck that's going to blow you out, you don't mind losing off-road because I mean unless you're playing against cars, he only has six health, and that six health will return it six damage on Menasaur when you do bring him back. So on our first turn, we're going to go ahead and script what we're going to be doing. So off-road, you're going to want to make sure that all your characters are, are lined up here, and depending on who you're fighting, even though Dead End has that tough one, you're going to want to flip him because you want that card advantage. So if you're going first, flip Dead End for the card advantage. You now have five cards in hand, and uh, that's going to help you out because you get your four for drawing on the first turn and the one extra one. You're going to send Off-Road in to anyone who can take it. Unfortunately, um, he's probably not going to do much damage, but he will be able to take a bit of damage from your opponents. So their turn will most likely come up and you're going to see that they're going to swing and most likely do a little bit of damage and you'll probably even pull a green pit back from uh, the attack. Uh, on your second turn, uh, you'll most likely draw some type of, you know, utility or an upgrade or weapon that will be able to help your group out. But if off-road is still low health like that, you may want to flip him to repair that one damage. That will matter. You can throw an armor on him, never throw a force field on him, because if he has, he, j he just won't survive the attack if he has already two damage on him. So you'll want to flip off-road. You'll never ever want to flip Motormaster until the end, because most decks do have some type of direct damage in them somehow or some way. Uh, if you notice that your opponent is not playing direct damage in the deck, you can flip Motormaster usually when you feel safe. But your second flip, most times, is going to be off-road, because you want to heal him, and then you'll want to play an upgrade that will benefit one of your characters, either an armor or an equipment, and an action that will provide you with a, with a beneficiary ability to attack with. So, on our third turn, or I should say second turn attack, uh, we're going to be going to go ahead and attack with Breakdown. Now, the reason why we're attacking with Breakdown is because this deck has primarily more blue pips then orange pips in it, and there'll be a more likely trigger that you will trigger Breakdown's ability, especially with your loadout. We should also mention that most of our characters here do have the melee subtype uh, on their card. There are a few that have the ranged and specialist abilities, but you'll notice that most of them do have the melee feature on their characters. So, if you do attack with Breakdown and you're able to play a bigger, uh, the bigger they are, or if you're able to play a Leap into Battle, you're going to find that you're going to be getting hitting for quite a bit, especially if you double, uh, you get do blue pips that come out when you're attacking. Now, by this time, when the next turn comes up and someone attacks into you, you may lose one of these characters, depending if you played an armor or force field or ability to protect them. Now, on your next turn that you're going to have, we have all your characters here, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, flip breakdown. 
Even though Breakdown doesn't really do anything, you're going to want to make sure that you're attacking with Drake Ship to draw those two additional cards. Um, Drake Ship is very effective, and by this time you will have an ability way to uh, either set up getting some, uh, some Orange Pips or some Blue Pips or trying to uh, get out there and do a little bit of damage. On your fourth turn, um, you're going to notice that Motormaster, uh, if they've been attacking with lots of pips, you can go ahead and flip Motormaster now or Drag Strip, depending on how you've been playing against your opponent. So most times I will flip Drag Strip because he has a. Uh, um, usually you're playing against three wide teams. So what you can do is you can go ahead and play an Inferno Breath to tap Motormaster because he really won't do that much damage, and then attack with Drag Strip to go ahead and get that Pearson and get some damage in. Now, Dead End as well will do a little bit of damage, but depending on how you're playing, you may want to make sure who you're attacking and who you're tapping with. So that's a bit of the setup for the deck and who you're going to be attacking and using on your turn. Uh, as always, you're may going to play different decks that will have different strategies, and also how you're playing against them may differ depending on what decks you're coming up against and your draw, because unfortunately, you may just draw a bad hand. But with this new uh, deck here, we're going to talk about the new actions in it, and how they will benefit each character in each deck that you go against. So, Heavy Handed is our first action. We're playing two of these because once Minasaur combines, he's going to be a force to reckon with, and giving the ability to give your character plus two and pierce four is fantastic. If you do happen to get this in your hand before you combine into Minasaur, you can pitch it with an inspiring leadership, or uh, you can perhaps just keep it in there if you want a tiny boost. The blue pips will also help against defense, Great. Next is Inferno Breath. Two copies of Inferno Breath. Now, I mentioned before how you're going to be tapping one of these characters here to uh, do three damage. You're not going to want to do that once you have Minasaur combined, because once you have Minasaur combined, three damage is not really worth it when Minasaur attacks for quite a bit. Now, Motormaster is a good person to target with that. Also, Breakdown, if you don't have him in his car mode, uh, to go ahead and tap that three damage and get that out. Next is two copies of Inspiring Leadership. This will let you draw the cards that you need once Minasaur has been combined and pitch the two that you don't. Let's say if your opponent has played a force field on one of their characters, you really need to get in there and hit for damage, but unfortunately, they've got armor there. You can draw one of the many removals that we have in this deck that can help you out. Since Minasaur can play two actions per turn, you'll most likely find a beneficial way from the actions that you draw or perhaps an upgrade that you have. Next is three copies to leap into battle. You're seeing a trend here with a lot of these blue pips because you're going to want your Stunticons to survive until they're able to combine in a Menasaur. Uh, Leap into Battle has been a, is the giant growth of the first set. Gives your character plus three until in a turn. It's a very straightforward card. Wonderful to go down. Next is three copies of Ramming Speed. Ramming Speed, uh, is there a scrap enemy upgrade? Um, as I mentioned before, once Minasaur does combine, this will help you get the armors off, the weapons that are giving you a problem. Perhaps there's a utility that's been causing you an issue. Uh, this will actually get it down, so once Minasaur combines, I find you're not going to play it as much once you actually are playing your, your Stunticons together because there's so many other actions that are worthwhile. This comes for late in the game when you need to get that removal out and also that extra point of damage. Next, we have two copies of Stunticon Enigma. Stunticon Enigma is there for, uh, to combine your Stunticons into Metasaur, but also draw you two cards when your hand gets low. Now, uh, you can try to play three if you want, but I find two's been the balance, since we do have a bit of draw in this deck, specifically from some of the cards we're going to talk about. Next, we have three surprise attacks. You're going to notice that your characters aren't going to do a whole lot of damage at the beginning of the game. Stunticons do have a low attack rate, and unless you have a way to bump them up through upgrades or an ability from an action card, Surprise Attack will get that pierced through. Also, getting the white pips for the trigger for either extra defense or extra attack uh, is great. It gives your character pierce three. Next is the bigger they are. The bigger they are is a action card that gives your character pierce four as long as they have less stars than the character you are attacking. It also gives you plus two attack. It's kind of the reverse of heavy handed. This will help you out early in the game. Great card. And last but not least is two copies of Treasure Hunt. Treasure Hunt uh, is will let you grab the, the upgrades that you're looking for. Uh, there are some in this deck that you can fish out by green pips, but this will most likely get you the ones that you need. Uh, it also gives you an orange pip for when you're attacking. Great card. So those are the actions. Now let's go ahead and talk about how these correspond with the characters here. So 
Motormaster is not really gonna be one to uh, use when you're attacking. He's most likely there to deflect damage when he's in his bot mode and also to prevent your opponents from burning you. He's a great target for Infernal Breath and also the bigger they are and surprise attack. Drag Strip uh, is a great target for most of the cards here which are Leap into Battle uh, and also the bigger they are to give more pierce. Uh, once he actually gets into his car side, I uh, sorry, out of his car side into his, into his other side, you're not going to be able to play a lot of the upgrades on him because he is ranged, so be careful with that. Offroad will always be your first attacker. If you're playing against cars, he is a huge problem for them, so you may not want to swim with him first if you're going against cars because them taking damage for attacking you is vital. In the case that you are going up against a car deck, you're going to want to make sure that you put, put Dead End out first so you can get that tough feature and uh, at least block some damage, especially with the fact that they're going to be taking the one damage every time one of their cars attacks. And if he goes out quickly, you're not going to get that bonus against cars. Uh, breakdown, he is really very situational. The fact that he gets plus two uh, when you do flip two blue icons, and as you can see here, there are primarily more blue icons than there are other symbols. You'll most likely trigger quite often. His other side is vanilla, so he could be a good target for an Infernal Breath once you actually get down to the, when you're getting extra attacks, once your opponents have all been tapped out. So yeah, next, let's go ahead and talk about our upgrades and how they correspond with these guys. So, Let's pull these puppies away. And we're going to go into our upgrades. First of all, we have three copies of Energon Axe. Energon Axe is a must needed card for this deck. If you don't have it, you have to have it for this deck to work. This char your characters are very, very low attack and getting an Energon Axe onto a damaged character is incredibly great because not only does this is in plus three, once it goes down a Minasaur, he'll be a wrecking force. The fact that Menacer only has 6 attack, this additional plus 3 will boost him up to 9, and the Pierce will give him Pierce 3, it's just great. Now, sometimes you're going to find your characters may be too damaged to, and then maybe KO'd for you to put them on here. So, if you're not able to go ahead and put them on here, we have a couple alternates. Next, um, we're going to have Enemy Combat Analysis. This will go in your decks against other combiners and characters who have the same stars as you. Since we've been seeing a lot of actual combiner teams and also characters with low stars, this may come in use early in game, but it'll mostly go on Menasaur if you're facing another combiner. You can pitch it with Inspiring Leadership if that is not the case. Next is three copies of Energon Slingshot. Energon Slingshot only goes on melee characters and it does one damage to an enemy. Now you're going to notice that some of your characters here have the melee subtype. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at them here. One is going to be uh, your character Motomaster. Motomaster has melee. Offroad has melee in both modes. And Dragstrip has melee in one mode. Most times you'll actually have those characters down here to go ahead and put that down. So be careful when you play it because if you don't have a melee character you know, on the battlefield to put this on, it's not going to do anything. But transferring one point of damage onto a character can actually really help your character once later on. Once you actually get your Energon Axe or your Grenade Launchers down or better weapons, you're going to want to go ahead and pitch this and uh, not use it as much. Next is an Enforcement Baton. Enforcement Baton, when you put this on a character, scrap an enemy weapon. Now, we do have lots of removal with Ramming Speed, and the fact that we can play two actions per turn is the reason why I have not included Bastion Shield in this deck, because we have so many ways to remove armor. So, this will actually get you a weapon out. You can fish it when you're attacking. Also, um, whenever you're defending, you might be able to pull this back. It lets you scrap an enemy weapon. It gives your character plus one to attack. Next, we have three copies of Force Field. This will be hugely important once you get Menasaur down to protect from the heavy hits uh, from a Grimlock or from another Combiner, perhaps even a Willjack that's going to be swinging at you, one of the Nemesis or Optimus Prime Battlefield Legends. This will squander their ability to uh, do lots of damage. Grenade Launcher. A uh, staple of most decks, it is, gives your character plus four to attack, uh, and at the end of the, uh, after the upgrade attacks, you're going to go ahead and scrap it. Next is one copy of Scoundrel's Blaster. Uh, I included originally a few more in my original build, but as I found I was playing more, this card became less relevant, and this is great to go on one of your low little guys to go ahead and do some pierce damage. You can pull it back with a flip. It's great. Two copies of Sparring Gear. Uh, this may be good to put on your characters early in the game, also, it's a great target for Minasaur to give him tough three because he already has tough one. You can pull it back with an attack or with a defense if you do have a card to pitch. And it's great. And our last card in our deck is Stunticon Swagger. Uh, this is fantastic. If this goes down on Minasaur, so many people are playing Bastion Shield right now that they sometimes forget to play removal for weapons and utilities. A stopping a character 
from using tough and bold is enormous. And if you do get this into your hand, you may want to hold on to it just for it to go down a minister later on, because most times people are so worried about getting the armor off that they'll completely forget about the, the Stunticon Swagger. And having your characters not benefit from those things, protecting your Stunticons, and also Menacer once they come down, is incredibly useful. So yeah, that is um, the basis of the upgrades. Let's go ahead in here and talk about how they interact with these characters over here. So Dragstrip himself, he has the ability, um, as you've seen before, to have Pierce one while he's on his bot side. You're not going to want to go ahead and play any Energon Slipsets on him because he has range, but he's a great target for Energon Axe. He's also a great target for Grenade Launcher, Scoundrel Blaster, any types of armor because unfortunately his defense is zero. Be very careful when you're attacking with Drake Strip because his defense is so small that he may get one-shotted by a large character. Off-Road can benefit from almost anything here. An Energon Axe, an Energon Slingshot, Batons, Force Field when you have it, but Sparring Gear is a much better target for him. He has a very low attack, so giving him Pierce is also very useful. Motormaster, uh, Motormaster will do well with Energon Slingshot and Energon Axe, or any of the upgrades that are here. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a very high attack, but his ability to stop direct damage and also completely nullify someone's attack by sending it into one of your other Stunticons is great. Breakdown. Breakdown here is a specialist car. Though we not are pl aren't playing any specialist armors that are in this deck here, um, you're going to notice that he's going to be one of your main targets for uh, any type of actual you know attack when you have a grenade launcher, scoundrel's blaster like that, or uh, any type of actual ability to make him go ahead and draw the two blue. Now we aren't playing a lot of bold in this deck, unfortunately, but uh, you will most likely always pull two blue when you're attacking. And lastly, Dead End. I really like Dead End. I've been using him in a Nemesis Prime build with Flame War, and I found that the more I play this character, the more I really enjoy him. He is ranged, so you can't target him with Energon Slingshot. Uh, if you are really worried about the Energon Slingshot, you can always go ahead and swap that out for spare parts like that to go ahead and keep the, your stuff on your characters for later on. But I found having three of them really helps out, because most of the time you will have a melee character, and Menasaur himself is melee. He has Tough One, and he has the ability to draw a card when he's on, the, on his other side. So, that is my updated Menacer list. I hope you enjoy it. I hope this deck uh, brings you lots of enjoyment at the local events. It is pretty competitive, so if you're playing against a new player who's just brought a casual you know, starter deck, you may want to go ahead and just not play this against them because they will feel very overwhelmed. Also, the deck may perform differently against other builds out there, so keep in mind that as long as you're having fun, that's all that really matters. And... As I said before, I hope you really enjoy this list. I hope you pull amazing things. Also, um, I've recently uh, partnered with TopDeck, uh, TCG.com. So if you want, you can use a promo code down in the description, which will give you 10% off your singles that you buy at their website. And uh, they're a great bunch of uh, uh, peeps that have uh, been helping me out here. And we decided to go ahead and give you guys a promo code. So feel free to look down in the link. The, for the link in the description, also the promo code. Check out their website. It's where I get most of my singles, where I get stuff. And yeah, they post great articles. They have a good page on Facebook. So be sure to check them out. Anyways, um, I hope uh, you enjoyed this video as I'm rambling now. So uh, let me know what you think down below. Subscribe, comment, like, uh, you know, tell me all about your thoughts, your criticisms, and any things that you'd like to change in this deck. And have a great day. Thanks so much and peace.